May I have your first and last name, please? Kip, K-I-P, Zeiter, Z-E-I-T-E-R. Thank you, Kip, for speaking with me. Are you associated with the Motor Research Center? I am. I'm the Visitor Services Coordinator for the International Motor Racing Research Center. Wonderful. We are standing next to a one-of-a-kind vehicle, is that correct? That is correct. This is a 1951 concept car called the LeSabre. It was designed by Harley J. Earl, the great GM designer stylist. Just describe some of the features that we can observe on this vehicle that may have been either cutting edge at the time or it certainly has a very aerodynamic look to it. Well, this is pretty much emblematic of concept cars from the 1950s. You'll notice the fins. Uh, actually, we don't want to use it, but if it started to rain, the top would automatically open, the wipers would work. Stuff that t in today's cars we take for granted, but again, this is a 70-some-year-old car. It has a suspension that you plug it in and it automatically lifts the car in case you have a flat tire. It's a supercharged 215 cubic inch V8. I don't know a lot more about the specs of it, but the, the, the reason this car is here is Harley Earl brought this car to Watkins Glen in 1951 for the sports car races. He saw 150,000 people chasing after sports cars as they were still running through the streets here in town. But they were cheering for no American cars because there was no American car in the field. So he went back to Detroit and two years later we had the 1953 Corvette. And in 1954 he gave an interview with a Detroit journalist and he basically said, I got the inspiration for the Corvette when I drove the LeSabre to Watkins Glen in 1951. So the reason the car is here is as we celebrate Corvette's 70th birthday, we thought it only appropriate to have the car that was here to start the whole thing. This was a real tricked out car. You know, lots of other things which I wish I could tell you, but I'm forgetting right now. But uh, no, this was a car literally decades ahead of its time. Mr. Earl himself was decades ahead of his time when it came to designing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a piece of work. I, I had seen numerous pictures of this car over the years. I've never seen it in person. I, I just think it's so striking to actually see it in person. And, and how did it get here? Where does it reside? Usually in a, in a museum or where does it go? This car is at the GM Heritage Center in Detroit and we had it shipped in last night it arrived and it will it will promptly leave us and head back to Detroit tonight after the festival is over. My goodness. And uh, the, why was only one made? Well, I can't tell you that exactly. I mean, concept cars of the 50s, they didn't build a lot of them. They built one as a design study, and then they would perhaps go in another direction and build another one. So this was, this is one of one. Last question, I'll promise to let you go. 75 years since the first American road race, 30th anniversary of the Grand Prix Festival, is that, if I have that correct. correct. We hear the cars, it's packed. What, is, what goes through your mind? How would you describe this event to, to folks who haven't been here yet? I think, it's, I think it's by far the coolest day of the year in Watkins Glen. I mean, this whole day is meant to celebrate those daring, some say crazy, but daring drivers that race literally through the streets of town beginning in 48, ending in 1952. This is an homage to them. And, and I just think it's the, the crowds that come out, the people that love running their cars through the street around the original course, that's what they're doing now is running that original 6.6 .6 mile course. Uh, for me, that you can't beat this day. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks.